hello good morning everybody and once again welcome to Pankasa's Echelon tutorials and this is uh, just a continuation video of uh, the IGCSC physics that I started with uh, two days back and uh, that was uh, video number one and it was on uh, I suppose uh, uh, physics chapter 12 that is sound and the name of the uh, chapter is sound okay and uh, this was from the David Sang third edition book that I am giving you the explanation right so uh, in the first video I think I uh, covered what is there in the nutshell in this chapter then I started with the first uh, topic that is what are the causes of the sound and all that okay and uh, I all the way I reached uh, at this point somewhere okay yeah, can you see this downward arrow back is here. so I reached at this point and uh, here I told you that I'm going to make a uh, I'm going to start a second video okay from here onwards right so I suppose till the first video till the end of the first video on this particular chapter I had completed what is a uh, compression and what is rarefaction okay now in uh, today's lecture i'm in continuation i'm going to start with uh, what is this bell jar experiment uh, what is this uh, oh, the jar experiment i'm going to start with and uh, let us see what comes ahead okay so let us get started so sound requires where i'm starting from sound requires essentially some or other medium to travel Okay, so because it's a mechanical wave and the definition of the mechanical wave is that it always requires a medium okay it cannot travel in vacuum sound being a mechanical wave it uh, invariably requires a medium okay medium is essential for sound to travel in vacuum it cannot travel somehow okay so that was the thing that we discussed in the last and today to prove this particular thing that is the sound requires some medium to travel okay we are going to see what is this bell jar experiment okay? now i suppose uh, all the students you know uh, must have uh, heard about this very famous experiment bell jar experiment uh, somewhere in your uh, earlier grades okay because this bell jar experiment is so simple and uh, easy to understand uh, and uh, it's a very it is uh, explaining you the very basic and important concept of sound that is it requires some or other medium to travel okay so this bell jar experiment shows that a medium is mandatory mandatory means what compulsory okay so a medium is compulsory for sound to travel this is what this bell jar experiment is going to tell you okay now regarding this bell jar experiment uh, i have a uh, okay i will come over here now somehow you know uh, this is about the uh, tuning fork that i have mentioned here so let me complete this and then we'll come back to this bell jar experiment okay so in the previous uh, video i talked to you about a tuning fork now this is that tuning fork can you see this is something which is known as a tuning fork it has a u shape ka metal ka uh, let's say a flat u shape uh, rod or something and then you have a handle below it to hold it okay and uh, this particular uh, thing you know the tuning fork it is uh, basically having two parts okay the two use and this part and this part these are known as the prongs pro and gs prongs these are known as the prongs of the tuning fork so what basically you do is you uh, hit this prong of the uh, tuning fork against a uh, hard surface like a rubber pad okay and uh, when you do that the tuning fork you know it starts vibrating now here you can see there's a picture shown of uh, one of the uh, uh, both the tuning fork okay so both the prongs this is prong number one this is prong number two okay so when you hit the pad the rubber pad they start vibrating can you see the vibration happening over here in both the prongs fine so with the help of this you know uh, this is the uh, uh, picture given in your uh, David Seng third edition book on uh, page number mistaken uh, on uh, page number 218 218 okay 
so that's figure number 12.12 .12. in this picture he is trying to explain you the natural uh, the tuning forks prongs move back and forth okay creating compressions and rarefaction in the air so when the tuning fork is uh, hit against a uh, hard uh, rubber pad okay both the prongs will start uh, vibrating and uh, this vibration you know is uh, passed on to the particles surrounding this uh, tuning fork that is the air so this tuning fork is always surrounded by air in this case it is surrounded by air so air particles you know this air particles this vibration will be transferred and the air particles will also start vibrating in the same way as the prongs are vibrating okay so they will vibrate in a uh, forward and backward uh, motion okay they will have a forward and backward motion a stage comes when all the particles you know in the air you know they are all very close to each other okay and they are in the compressed state or you can say they are squashed okay so when they are in that stage okay, that particular region okay, is known as a compression so this is the compression region. See, this is denoted by a capital c now when this tuning for now this happens when the tuning fork is uh, towards the right okay this side because the pressure will be built up on the right of the tuning fork okay here so when the tuning fork is going to go back to this position okay backward motion what will happen the pressure here will be released right the pressure here will be released so what will happen uh, this uh, rare uh, this compression you know it will move forward in this position and this in place of this uh, compression you will get a rare fraction now what is this rare fraction because the pressure here is reduced between the tuning fork up prong and the air particles which are very close to the this particular tuning uh, this particular prong okay because the pressure has reduced the particles you know they will be relaxed okay and they will try to move away from each other okay and uh, there will be sufficient distance between them right so situation like this will be created where you can say that the particles are stretched out okay so these two words are important for compression you have to use the word uh, squashed for rare fraction what you have to use is uh, uh, stressed in the stretched position what happens the molecules are uh, you know moving away from each other they are free to move away from each other they are relaxed in the squashed position what happens is the molecules are coming close to each other right they are coming close to each other right come close to each other and uh, they are in the uh, compact position okay they are very close to each other this is compression this is rarefaction okay so this is how a rarefaction will be created compression has been moved ahead and rarefaction is created over here again the uh, prong of the tuning fork is going to come back to this position to the right okay so when it comes back to the right again there will be a creation of uh, another compression okay then again there will be a creation of another rarefaction so in uh, alternate phase you know in alternate positions uh, a series of compressions and a series of rarefaction will be generated and at the same time this uh, compressions and rarefaction will be moving ahead in this direction can you see in this direction this is how sound energy is transferred slowly from uh, uh, you know left to right okay. so this is how the sound travels this is the mechanism of the uh, sound traveling from left to right okay so one more thing let me tell you over here the sound is traveling from left to right in this case okay and the particles okay they are also vibrating from left to right sound is traveling in one direction from left to right but the particles of the air they are uh, also vibrating or moving in this same left to right direction so can you say that the direction of the vibration of the air particles and the direction of the uh, transfer or the travel of the sound energy are both same okay. so when this happens that is the uh, direction of the vibrating particles and the direction of the propagation of the wave both are same okay we say that uh, such waves are longitudinal waves this is why we say that uh, uh, sound waves are longitudinal okay. there is another kind of wave which is known as a transverse wave
but here there's something else what is happening okay in transverse wave these two directions that is the direction of the movement of the particles and the direction of the movement of the uh, wave okay these are not uh, same but they are perpendicular to each other right these are perpendicular to each other such waves are known as transverse here the direction will be same or you can say parallel okay so that was all about this uh, how the sound travels in air uh, has been explained with the help of this uh, tuning fork okay all this what i have uh, told you just now written over here okay in the five steps right so no need of uh, reading out again for you so let us go ahead and come down to this bell jar experiment which uh, i was just uh, talking about so bell jar experiment let us talk something about this bell jar experiment so what is this bell jar experiment bell jar experiment is a very famous experiment okay and it was uh, carried out to show that the sound always needs some medium travel in this case we are concentrating on the medium air okay so uh, let me brief you what is happening in this experiment so what happens you know you have to take a bell take a electric bell and uh, somehow you have to uh, arrange uh, uh, to hang that bell uh, at the top of a uh, bell jar okay now this is a bell jar okay inverted u right this shape is known as a bell jar so this uh, in this bell jar you have to hang this uh, uh, bell okay this is the electric bell it is connected uh, to the battery okay and when you switch on okay, it will definitely ring okay so that arrangement you have to do this bell jar you have to keep it on a table somewhere comfortably on a table and when you keep it in this way you will see that some air is already trapped like the bell jar air is there okay now what you have to do is uh, uh, one more thing let me tell you this bell jar has a uh, mechanism okay where you have a opening over here somewhere over here to that opening you know you can always this opening is connected to a pump okay this is connected to a vacuum pump what is a vacuum pump when you on this vacuum pump what what this pump will do it can suck out all the air from this bell jar okay so when you on this pump the air can be removed from this bell jar so that mechanism that provision is there in this bell jar experiment so whenever you want the air can be removed from this bell jar okay so first what you do is you don't remove the air let the air be inside okay and then you switch on this bell okay the bell will start ringing and uh, this bell jar basically it is made up of uh, a glass okay it is made up of a glass material now glass is a solid and you know that uh, sound travels through solid so what happens when you on this uh, switch of the bell jar the uh, uh, of the bell the bell will start ringing a lot okay the bell ka jo sound hai that will be transferred through the air because air is there inside this bell jar okay so air is a being a medium you know it will allow the sound to travel through it so the sound will be traveling from the air and it will be coming to the uh, bell jar ka wall okay, which is made up of glass and you know that uh, even to the solid the sound can travel because again uh, solid is a uh, medium okay uh, in fact uh, in solid in glass you know the sound of the the velocity of the sound will be increasing okay compared to what it was in air so now the uh, sound will coming out from the uh, bell jar and uh, you are suppose uh, performing the experiment so you are obviously outside the bell jar so you will be able to hear the sound of the bell now all this uh, ringing of the bell you are able to uh, perceive because uh, everywhere there is a medium inside the bell jar there is a air through which the sound travels then there is this glass to that also the sound travels then after coming out again there is a air so air is also medium so sound keeps on traveling as far as it gets medium it will travel so it comes travels and reaches your ears okay and it reaches into the ear drum of your ear and uh, you can perceive the sound okay so that is how this bell ringing over here inside 
will be heard by you. But now, all of a sudden, what you can do is not all of a sudden, but uh, what you can do is now you own this pump. Okay, you own this pump. Okay, of course, you off the bell, uh, bell now. The bell should not be kept uh, ringing. You off the bell now. And uh, you add this, or you let it be on only. Okay, let the bell be on. Okay, so bell is ringing. And you can hear the uh, sound. It's loud and nice. Okay, you're hearing this the sound of the bell. Now, what you do is you uh, on this pump. Okay, when you on this pump, what will happen? The pump will become active and it will uh, suck out all the air okay, gradually from this bell jar. So, slowly, steadily, what is happening? The bell is ringing uh, and the air is being removed out from the bell jar because of this suction pump. Okay? So, uh, slowly, as the air is being removed out, the content of the air particles inside the bell jar is getting reduced right now when the content of the particles is getting reduced you can say that the medium is uh, becoming uh, you know uh, uh, going towards vacuum okay because air particles are being removed now when the air particles are uh, reduced okay the sound energy will find it difficult to travel because there are very few particles now, air particles inside the bell jar. So, the sound particles coming out from the bell, okay, I, I'm sorry, not particles, the sound energy coming out from the bell will find it difficult to reach the glass itself, okay, the glass of the bell jar. Okay. And that's the reason, you know, now you won't be able to hear the sound as loud as you were hearing before, but the sound will now become very feeble, it will become uh, less in its intensity and as and when you keep on uh, you know reducing the air particles that is by you know the pump you know it is removing the air once a stage will come when entire air is removed from the glass jar okay so when there's no air inside the glass jar you can say that there's a vacuum created inside the glass jar and in vacuum this bell is still ringing but it is not traveling okay so it is not reaching the bell jar ka wall okay so when it is not reaching only bell jar ka wall, so there's no question of it coming out of the bell jar and reaching your ear. So that is how, you know, at, after a certain stage, you won't be able to hear that sound of the bell. And what's the reason? Because the air has been totally removed from the bell jar, air has been uh, removed by this pump, and there's a vacuum created inside the bell jar. And everybody knows that sound doesn't travel through a vacuum. So that's the reasoning and that's the explanation which clearly indicates that without air uh, it would have not been possible for the sound of the bell to be heard by a person outside. Okay. So it proves that uh, a medium like air is very very essential for sound energy to travel. Okay. So that was that famous bell jar experiment. So having done this bell jar experiment, next is uh, let us try to understand this uh, few questions and uh, let us proceed. So question number four, all these questions are from your David Seng book. In the process of explaining uh, concept of sound from this book, okay, I am also uh, solving or I am also explaining you the questions the book are given, question and the answers. Okay, so it becomes uh, nice for students to uh, you know, prepare for the exam, right? So, question number four is this. Explain why sound cannot be heard in a vacuum. Now, just now I told no particles to vibrate in a vacuum. When there's a vacuum created, or where there is a vacuum, obviously there are no particles because there's no medium. And so, sound cannot travel in vacuum. That's the obvious reason sound cannot be heard in a vacuum. Question number five. Describe and explain what is heard when the vacuum pump is switched on in the bell jar experiment. In this bell jar experiment, just now I explained you when you on the pump, okay, the suction pump, when you on it, slowly the air particles will be removed from the bell jar, from the inside of the bell jar, it will be removed. Okay, so the uh, air particles are slowly reduced, so uh, vacuum will be. Uh, gradually created okay so the bell is uh, initially loud okay so in the beginning the bell will be loud enough and you will be able to hear it because the 
and there is sufficient air inside the bell jar but once you on this switch of the pump the air starts reducing so the bell is initially loud but as the air is pumped out of the jar of the jar now when the air is pumped out when you on this switch the pump so when the switch is on the air will be pumped out of the jar and the sound becomes quieter okay or feeble you can say until it cannot be heard as the air uh, no more uh, as there are no more air particles left to carry the sound vibration okay so i hope you have understood this explanation so a stage will come when the air will be totally removed from the bell jar and there won't be any air particles left out in the bell jar to carry this sound vibrations and there's no particles left out you won't be able to hear the sound so the sound will become uh, feeble or quieter and at one stage you won't be able to hear any sound okay, so that's the explanation of this question number five let us move on to question number six a boy sees lightning and hears the thunder thunderclap nine seconds later calculate how far away is the storm but this question is related to this particular uh, formula Okay, this T is a uh, echo and so this particular question is related to this formula okay not exactly this formula. Okay, let us see so fine no this is not related to this sorry, sorry. so let us see this uh, question first right. now the question says that a boy sees lightning and here's the thunder clap nine seconds later so there is somewhere far away a storm taking place or a storm has reached a place and a boy somewhere over here okay, he can see the lightning of this storm okay so he can see the lightning and after nine seconds after seeing the lightning nine seconds later okay, after nine seconds he can hear Okay, he can uh, perceive the sound of this uh, thunderclap. Okay, so storm's sound can be heard. How uh, the thunderclap is nothing but the sound of the storm. Okay, so that can be heard by this boy nine seconds after he has seen this lightning. Okay, so there's a gap of nine seconds between the lightning and the thunderclap. Okay. how much is the gap nine seconds right calculate how far away the storm is now we have to calculate uh, how much uh, distance the storm is at the boy or rather uh, at what distance the boy is from the storm so how much time how much uh, distance the storm will have to travel to reach to this boy that's the question calculate how far away is the storm okay so let us approach this question in a very logical way okay now you know that the speed of the light or we, uh, sorry the speed of the sound or you can say the velocity of the sound vs is around uh, 340 or maybe 350 meter second inverse okay? in air in air this is the velocity 350 meters per second the meaning of this is every one second the sound is traveling 350 meters isn't it so in one second the storm will travel 350 meter in another one second okay the one second it will travel another 350 meters in the third second another one second it will travel another 350 meters okay? because the velocity is uh, constant in air uh, for this sound so if you add up this three 350 350 350 it happens to be three three six three nine hundred and this one 900 uh, and this uh, 50 plus 50 is 150 so around 1050 meters you get okay so uh, this 1050 meter or roughly you can say 1000 meter okay for the sake of uh, better calculation we'll take instead of 1050 we are taking 1000 meter so 1000 meter will take how many seconds to travel three seconds because 350 meters traveled in one second in two seconds 700 meter 
in three seconds it will be thousand fifty meter so roughly it will be thousand meter so thousand meter is traveled in three seconds by this storm now thousand meter let me write it as one kilometer let's do that my statement becomes one kilometer is traveled in three seconds by what the sound okay. this thunder clap is nothing but the sound okay now this boy has heard the thunder clap nine seconds later isn't it he heard the thunder clap nine seconds later so if the thunder clap is heard nine seconds later you can try to find out what is this distance okay in kilometer between the boy and the storm so if you want to find out this you'll have to do a unitary method and that cross multiplication so the nine into one will be nine divided by this three so nine divided by three works out to p three will be the answer for this question mark and because this is kilometer this will be kilometer so your answer is after nine seconds okay the storm will be traveling three kilometers isn't it whether it is sound will be traveling or the storm will be traveling that is one and the same thing right so three kilometer is the distance between the boy and the storm that is how you get this answer thus the storm is three kilometer away hope you understood this question okay. it was a simple unitary uh, method that you have to use in solving this question right so that was question number six let us move ahead and talk about speed of the sound how it is uh, affected what happens when it uh, changes medium and all that okay so coming to speed of the sound the speed of the sound increases the up upward arrow means increases the speed of the sound increases as it travels into a more denser medium okay so as the medium uh, becomes more and more denser the speed of the sound in that medium is not increasing it's a very important statement speed of the sound in air is say 350 or 340 meter per second okay, now air is a comparatively a less denser medium okay. suppose the same sound is traveling in water okay in suppose fresh water so in fresh water the speed of the same sound wave now increases from 340 to 1490 meter per second okay. so it has increased why it has increased because the density of the water is more than the density of the air air is gas water is liquid so it all depends upon the spacing between the molecules so in the gas the spacing between the particles of the air or the gas you know is uh, quite large okay so we say that uh, because the distance between the particles is large the sound will find it uh, not easy to travel so it will travel very slow in water what happens these particles they come very closer to each other compared to this air they come closer to each other the so particles are nearby so the sound will find it easy to uh, travel through them okay so because the particles are nearby so here the velocity increases from 340 to 1490 suppose the water was not a fresh water but it was a saline water okay some salt is added to that water sea water you can say so sea water may density is even more that means the sea water ka density is increased so as i told you when the medium becomes more dense the velocity of the sound increases so from 1490 it increases to 1530 meters per second the line water now suppose the same sound is coming out of the water and it is traveling to a uh, through a steel bar okay metal bar steel bar now you will find that the sound is traveling still faster why because in solid steel is a solid in solid the particles are still more closer to each other okay compared to water okay they are still more closer to each other so they are very close to each other and this makes the sound to travel even more easily because the particles are very close to each other okay so it, the sound energy can step on one particle next particle that way and it will travel really faster because it has a lot of particles to support it okay, nearby so the velocity turns out to be 4900 meter per second so this indicates that the velocity of the sound keeps on increasing as the medium becomes denser from air to water water to saline water saline water to steel if there's some more medium which is having 
more density than steel then the sound car velocity will increase in that medium still more okay it will go, go beyond this uh, 5000 1900 per second so that is another concept that the speed of the sound increases as the density of the medium increases okay speed of the sound can be measured in air using two methods one is this echo method so let us discuss that first and then we will see that this echo method is not a quite efficient one we will see some other method alternate method first method let us discuss is this sound is measured using echo method okay so in this echo method this is the formula that you have to make use of that is speed will be equal to 2d upon t where t is the echo time okay so let me tell you how this experiment is performed now suppose there is a wall, a large wall, <coughs> a large flat wall, there is a large surface area and uh, you can see this girl who is standing around 50 meters away from the wall and there is the friend of this girl who is standing just uh, next to her and he is helping her in uh, measuring the uh, time I suppose, he is holding some uh, stopwatch kind of thing in his hand, okay, so these two people are performing a experiment okay so what they are doing is first of all they both are standing at a distance of 50 meter from the wall so the distance between the wall and the clap clap is uh, something that this girl is going to uh, make sound from okay so you can imagine two wooden blocks okay when that girl is going to bang this two wooden block against each other there will be a clap sound so she will keep on making this clap sound by banging this two wooden blocks against each other and this fellow, his, uh, her friend, is going to uh, measure the time using a stopwatch. Okay, fine. So that's the arrangement. The distance initially between the wall and the clap is 50 meters. So they are standing at a distance of 50 meters. This 50 meter distance is essential because it has to be always greater than 17 meter. If you are standing within 17 meter, okay, this echo won't be possible. Okay, echo is only possible after 17 meter. So distance has to be minimum 17 meter between the sound produced and the uh, uh, wall to which it is going to hit okay so that should be minimum distance of 17 meter that's another concept so remember that so the distance has to be somewhat bigger than 17 meter in this case they have taken 50 meters right no issue so the distance between the wall and the clap that is going to be made is 50 meter right clap once on hearing it uh, clap once on hearing its echo so what this girl does you know first she will clap okay so when she claps after some she will hear definitely the uh, sound of this clap because the clap uh, this clap is created very near to her okay her ear is not far away so the first sound will be heard immediately of the clap but this sound will be traveling in this direction it will travel it will travel it will hit the wall and it will be reflected back in the same direction but by the same distance so this is known as echo echo is what the, the sound which is reflected back okay so this sound after hitting the wall is reflected back and after a certain time okay uh, this sound will be reheard will be again heard without clapping okay without clapping the same sound will be heard again that is known as echo okay so this girl will again hear a sound echo sound and when she hears that echo sound okay Again, at the same time, she is clapping. So the second clap, the second actual clap that is uh, performed by this girl indicates the uh, sound of the echo has reached the girl. Okay. So between first clap and the second clap that the girl is making, okay, the time duration is nothing but uh, we can say uh, t. Okay. That is. Uh, and this fellow, her friend, he is measuring that time, isn't it? So, this time duration is your time taken for the sound to travel in this direction and come back in this direction. This time is known as echo time, which you have to take in this formula. Okay. So, between one and two claps, you get a T echo. Now, this T echo is a very small time. Okay. It's a fraction of a second, right? So, in calculation this t if you are doing just a one a two claps okay then uh, this t will be very small and uh, the friend will not be able to measure because it is very small so 
so what they think is they they think uh, they plan to uh, uh, repeat this clap after hearing the echo 20 times okay so this way there will be one two three four and 20 claps okay? so this girl is going to make 20 claps right and this the guy is going to count those claps and when 20 claps are over he'll, he will stop the stopwatch okay so here this guy has started the stopwatch the girl keeps on banging the uh, this thing wooden block against each other and one two three four five six that way they are counting the moment 20 claps are over okay this friend of this girl we will stop the stopwatch and now we will get t echo for 20 claps okay which will be sufficiently large okay it can be say 10 seconds or 20 seconds whatever but it will be sufficiently large which can be uh, taken into consideration for calculation okay so this t for one clap is very less so you convert it into uh, 20 claps and find out t so 20 claps ke liye t is suppose 10 seconds right now what happens now the experiment is over now the calculation will be starting okay so here i have written this may uh, uh, this this way uh, 20 claps could be made measure the time duration for this 20 claps and uh, i told you the time duration is measured by this fellow and uh, suppose it was 10 seconds okay. or rather let us take 6 seconds because i have taken okay. fine so for 20 claps the time was 6 seconds right so now to total distance traveled by the sound each clap okay so what is the total distance traveled by the sound now when the sound is made you know one two three four these are each clap ka sound okay so implies that sound is going to the now each clap ka sound means the sound is going from here to the wall and coming back from the wall to same place so each clap is nothing but the sound going to the wall and coming back okay so 20 claps will be what will be the meaning of 20 claps it will be 20 multiplied by 2 into 50 now what is why it is 2 into 50 the distance between the girl and the wall is 50 meters okay and this time for each clap is uh, traveling this distance towards the wall and coming back again the same distance so it will be 50 into 2 so 50 into 2 is 100 100 and this is the uh, uh, this is uh, for one clap and you are uh, making 20 claps so 20 into 2 into 50 will be the total distance traveled by the Okay, in 20 claps, what will be the total distance travel? 50 meter in 50 meter. One clap over, 50 meter again 50 meter. Two claps over, 50 meter again 50 meter. Three claps over, 50 meter again 50 meter. Four claps over. So you can see in each clap, the distance traveled is 50 plus 50, 100 meter. So in uh, 20 claps, the distance travel will be 100 times 20, that is 2000 meter. I think that is understood. Fine. Now, 2000 meter is the total distance travel, and this guy he was recording the time right from the first clap to the 20th clap. Okay, so he found that after the stopwatch was started at the first clap, and when he stopped the stopwatch after 20 claps, okay, the time duration was six seconds. Suppose. Okay, so let us assume that the record recorded time taken for 20 claps as six seconds. Now, these two things we are going to plug in this formula. So, speed is equal to total distance upon time. And total dis distance will be not this 2D, it will be 2000 meter. Why? Because we have taken 20 claps. Okay. So, I will take this total distance as 2000 meter. And for this 20 claps, the time duration was 6 seconds. So, this time I am going to take 6 seconds. So, this time is nothing but the uh, echo time it is known as echo time okay so 2000 divided by 6 meters will be nothing but the total distance traveled by the sound in 20 claps divided by the time required for the 20 claps so it is 2000 upon 6 to work out it will be 333.3 meters per second 333.3 meter per second for the approximation you can consider this 333 as 340 and you can write that the velocity of the sound is 340 meters per second. So this is that uh, echo uh, method by which sound can be, uh, the velocity of the sound can be measured, of course, in air. Okay. 
but then there's a drawback why the echo method is not giving accurate value of the speed of the sound now this 340 meter per second is a no is a value which has been decided after a lot of experience but initially they used to find that this figure you know it was fluctuating every now and then okay so it was <clears throat> never giving you accurately 340 meter per second the reason for that was you are measuring the echo time okay and uh, this echo time ka measurement you are use, uh, uh, measuring using a stop clock okay so in stop clock there is something called reaction time okay it's possible that the friend of that girl may lose some time in reacting to on the stop clock or in reacting to off the stop clock okay there may be a um, you know error in doing that okay that is known as the error in the reaction time so this is so there's no uh, accurate value for this speed because the reaction time is in counting the time for 20 claps use an error any human being you know can uh, make such errors okay so for 20 claps the reaction time will always be there okay every individual is going to you know not uh, start the stopwatch exactly at the time it has to be started and he will not off the stopwatch at the exactly the time when it will be off so there will be this uh, reaction time coming in picture and because of that reaction time there will be always some error and that's the reason this particular uh, echo method is not 100% uh, guaranteed okay. so for that purpose you have another method which is this one the better method is this one okay so i don't know the name of this method but let us see what happens in this method using electronic timer so in this method you know we are going to use this electronic timer this is an electronic timer the electronic timer is something which is going to immediately measure the time the moment the sound is reaching it okay so electronic timer is not like a stop clock it is not operated by any human being it's a totally mechanic i mean electronic so there won't be any reaction time involved in this okay so by using this uh, electronic timer you are you know removing out that uh, error which was caused because of the reaction time okay so using electronic timer and two microphones you have to use okay so uh, what you do is you clap okay with the wooden blocks you make a clap uh, uh, near the first microphone now this is microphone number one this is microphone number two and uh, the two microphones are kept away from each other at a distance say x okay now this guy is going to clap before the first microphone so when he claps okay immediately this timer is going to record some time okay suppose the time is two seconds let's record it right now this clap okay will record will be recorded by this timer and it will tell you t1 as two seconds now this clap will reach at this particular microphone number two after some time because the microphone number two is kept at a distance away from the first microphone the first microphone is very close to where the clap is made okay the so first microphone ka reading will be recorded first it is two seconds then you will be this sound of the same clap you know we will be reaching the second microphone after some time because it is at a distance of say x from the first microphone and again the uh, second clap will be recorded I mean whatever clap is heard by this microphone it will be recorded by this timer suppose that is say four seconds right so you get in this timer two values one is two seconds one is four seconds two seconds is for the clap from the first microphone and four second is from the clap in the second microphone there's a difference in this two timing okay now the difference between these two timing that is 4 seconds minus 2 seconds so t2 minus t1 will be 4 minus 2 is 2 seconds so this 2 seconds the difference in the time is corresponding to this distance isn't it now if you use this formula speed of the sound in air is equal to distance upon time so the distance between the two microphone you have to take as x okay, which you can always measure with the help of this tape and that you have to divide by this t now this t is nothing but t2 minus t1 
the difference between the timer value of uh, t1 and t2 okay so that happens to be in our case two seconds so x divided by this time will give you the speed of the sound now this particular experiment is more accurate it is more comfortable and uh, this is rather used compared to the echo one okay? now in the next video i will be coming to the questions and this will be question number i think uh, 7 8 and 9 and that i will be discussing in the next video because time doesn't permit me that's all for this uh, video and uh, see you in the next video if you happen to like my today's video that is video number 2 on sound from uh, igcsc uh, david sang third edition book okay if you happen to like my video please subscribe my channel and uh, motivate me to make even more videos okay so see you bye take care all of you